Hey, what's up guys? Captain Zach here. Well, I am super excited to make some smoked salmon for you today. So I get a lot of questions about how I make smoked salmon. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes and make a video and really just go step by step and just walk you through how I make smoked salmon. So how I prep the fish, how I'll cut the fish, the seasoning I use, how I'll sort of brine it, make sure I get a nice pellicle on it, all the way through to how I smoke it and then process it at the end. Today I'll be using the original masterpiece blend of my smoked salmon dry brine. I'm really proud of this seasoning. So I've spent years and years and years sort of honing this recipe. I've probably made a couple hundred batches of smoked salmon and I'm always tinkering to figure out a little more of this, a little less of that. And I think I nailed it here. I mean, this is a really sort of rich combination of like garlic and pepper notes, but then it also has a little bit of like sweet and salty. So it has just enough sweetness to kind of open up that flavor profile of the fish. And then the salt is actually sort of an alder smoked salt, which is just a quintessential like Alaskan smoked salmon profile. Really tasty stuff. So some might be wondering why dry brine over wet brine? Well, I'm a big fan of these dry brines, and, and let me tell you why. I think first and foremost, it's all about the flavor. You'll see these do a wonderful job of really kind of working the flavor down into the fish throughout the filet. And then also the pellicle, you'll see when it comes off the smoker, it just creates this really rich, flavorful, almost a crust to it that is just uh, hard to beat. It's just really, really tasty stuff. Uh, I think also from a flavor standpoint, the fact that you can adjust the flavor, so if you really want it sort of heavily seasoned you can go heavy if you want it lighter you can go lighter it gives you a lot of optionality and then also I think just the the presentation as well so the presentation of this when it comes off the smoker is great and you'll see that dry brine really gives it some really cool texture and some nice colors that just perfectly complement what is going to be a really tasty bite of smoked fish Okay, so let's get started. I've got the uh, coho fillets laid out here, so you can see there's eight fillets. This was four uh, coho salmon that were, were swimming just yesterday. So caught these yesterday and, and filleted them on the dock. You'll note that when I fillet these on the dock, they still have the pin bones in. So that when, when I show you how we cut it up here, it's important to note that for cohos, it's just my personal preference that when I'm making smoked salmon, I will cut the pin bones out, uh, which is a little different than what I do with kings. With kings, that's a much bigger fillet, and I will, uh, I'll take the pin bone pliers and actually pull all the pin bones out of the king. Uh, but since this is coho and this is all gonna be smoked fish, you'll see exactly how I uh, cut the pin bones out so that every piece of uh, fish that you get off the smoker is perfectly uh, boneless. So the way I like to remove the pin bones is actually fillet them out. So you'll see I uh, have a cutting board here and then my fillet knife. I've sharpened that fillet knife up to be razor sharp once again. And then I'll actually fillet the pin bones out and then I'll use my fillet knife as well to cut the fillet into the correct size pieces. So I like having just a super sharp fillet knife to be able to make all the relevant cuts such that uh, it's a quick and easy process. Okay, I'm ready to start taking these pin bones out, but before I get started, one tip. I like to lay down some parchment paper uh, below the cutting board, and I, I make sure it extends off you know, a good six inches each side, because if you lay a big fillet down, there's a chance it's gonna kinda land on your counter, and so I'd rather it land on the parchment paper than your, uh, than your counter. Okay, last little piece of housekeeping before we make any cuts. I like to get two bowls ready to go. So here's a small bowl. That's gonna be used for the pin bone strips. I'll have a pile of those at the end. That'll be crab bait. So I like to either, I'll use that as fresh crab bait or I'll just toss it in a, in a Ziploc bag and uh, toss it in the freezer for the next time I'm go crabbing. And then a nice big plastic bowl. And this is where the, uh, the smoked salmon chunks will go. So after I cut the, the salmon into the right size portions, I'll just have a, uh, a huge bowl of, uh, of those pieces and then they'll be ready for seasoning. Okay, so I mentioned that I fillet the pin bones out and I certainly wasn't kidding. So I use my, uh, the same fillet knife. This is something that has a, a medium flex to it. So you can see as I push down, it actually flexes. That does a really nice job of riding right along the pin bones. So the first thing I like to do is, is use my fingers, you see my left hand here, and, and just kind of put my fingers all along those pin bones. So you just rub, you know, from the top of the fillet to the bottom. The pin bones will be right above the center line, if you're not familiar. So this is the center line of the fish. The pin bones will be right up here. And they'll run from the very front to about midway down the fillet. And so what I like to do 
is once you identify where they are, and it's pretty easy if you just run your finger down them, they'll start to stick out just a little bit. I take the knife and then I just make a cut. I like to cut on the top of the pin bones first, and then I let the blade actually just ride the pin bones down. The pin bones will face towards the top, so they're not straight down, they're on an angle. So you'll see the cut I make is actually gonna be on an angle. But I'm not just guessing, I can feel this knife against the pin bones. And I'm making some, some nice cuts here. I'm not going all at once, I'm just letting it ride right down, just so that way it uh, doesn't waste any meat. So I don't wanna take a huge gouge of meat if I don't have to. And then once I'm to the bottom, what I do is I cut the skin like so. So basically, now what we're left with here this is a bone-free piece of meat, which I'll make into a couple of pieces of smoked salmon. And I still have pin bones in here. So I still have some work to do. What I'll do is I'll come just below the pin bones now and follow the same process. It's just these light, light little cuts with a nice sharp knife. And really you're just following the pin bones down. Just following them down. And once you get to the bottom, you can make a nice cut to cut the skin. And then you'll have this strip of pin bones here. And what I like to do, I kind of lift it up and just make one final cut there to get this strip of pin bones out. And then that goes to the little bowl. Now, depending on the size of the fish, the size of the salmon, that'll sort of dictate some of the next steps about how big the, the pieces are. Generally speaking, the larger the fillet, the narrower I'll make the pieces. And if it's a small fillet, I'll make some larger pieces, just so that there's sort of a more consistent surface area. So I take this tag end, and what I'll do is cut that off. I almost always make this into two pieces, especially with coho. So I'll go ahead and cut that. There's those two pieces that comes up here and toss it in the bucket. Then what I'll do is I'll come right down to here. So I already cut the top strip off, the pin bones were here, so now you've got this sort of angle on the fillet. And what I like to do is just sort of cut it to be flat, such that this is like a nice tail section. Then you've got this, this section here. This section here is perfect for slicing down into more uniform sized smoked salmon chunks. And then this is gonna be thicker as well. You can, see, you can see the thickness there is different than sort of the tail piece. See how thin the tail is? So the, the tail piece will be kind of larger in there. I'll have a larger piece of, uh, of the tail meat. And for, for this thick chunk, what I'll do is I'll cut it into more strips such that the surface area will still be uh, maximized and then it'll smoke kind of evenly at the, and get to the correct temperature. So there's not an exact science about how thick to cut these, you know, call it about an inch. In some cases it might be a couple inches depending on the thickness. But I like to just go ahead and slice them down like that. And you'll see you get these nice, nice bits of smoked salmon, like there's a there's one that's like a little bit larger. That's totally fine. And you'll see that when I get these to the smoker, I'll often pull off the smaller pieces first. Just because a tail piece, something like that thick, is going to cook at a little different timing than something that thick. And that's totally okay. No big deal. Hey, one other tip is to always have some paper towels nearby. So salmon are definitely a rich, oily fish. So king salmon especially, you, when you handle king salmon, you almost can barely even hold on to it. It's so oily. Cohos do still have some nice oil to them though, but every, time, every so often, if you wanna kinda dry your hands and pick up the next fillet, or you need to make sure you've got good knife skills and your knife's not slipping, make sure you have some paper towels to, uh, to get some of that oil off your skin. 
Now I'll just process the rest of these. It'll probably happen at warp speed, but you'll see it's the exact same process. It's gonna be the exact same steps. I'm gonna fillet these pin bones out, start on the top line, then work to the bottom line. Again, you know those pin bones are gonna to head towards the top of the fillet. They'll go about midway back. They're just above that, that center line. Cut it there, we'll get the two pieces out of here. Cut it there. We'll probably get a couple of pieces out of the tail. And then what's remaining here, it'll just be those, those uniform strips. Okay, now that we've got the pin bones removed and the fish cut into pieces, we're ready for the last step of the night. So what I've done is I've washed off a tray and I've pulled it over here. Uh, I've got my bottle of seasoning here, which I'll use. And then the last addition is a plastic bucket. This is a small plastic tote, which I find works really well to stack the fish in as I'll be brining it overnight. When I stack the seasoned fish in here, I always do it flesh to flesh which is to say that the first row at the very bottom will be skin side down, and then the next row will be skin side up, such that the red meat is always contacting the red meat, and that you've always have the silver skin contacting the, the silver skin. Okay, so what I'll do is actually start laying out the pieces of fish onto the tray. doesn't have to be perfect. We're just looking for getting these fish onto the, the tray so that we can season them. So now we've got some, some pieces of fish there. What I'll do is open up the bottle of seasoning. And what I like to do here is give it a light, a light coating all over the top. So what I do is I go all across the top, give it kind of a light coating And then what I'll do is I'll pick up each piece. So I'll pick up each piece and then I'll give it a little extra seasoning on the side that didn't get covered. So you see I'll get the edges, anything that didn't get a coating of seasoning. So now this, this piece has some seasoning all over it and then that is ready to go in the, uh, in the tote, skin side down. And you'll see this process goes actually pretty quick. So what I'll do is I'll just be kind of pouring out the seasoning, tossing the fish in the tote. See, I'm kind of pouring the seasoning, then the piece of fish to the tote. Since we already got the tops of all these pieces of fish, there's just a little bit of, a little bit of uncovered space that we want to make sure we get a little bit of brine on before they, before they head to the tote. And that worked out almost too perfectly. <laughs> you see the very bottom, I've got a uh, one single layer of fish there. And so essentially, I'll uh, repeat the process. So I'll put more chunks of fish on the tray, season those the same way, and then the next row I put down, I'll do it flesh to flesh. So I'll do it the skin side up so that the meat is touching the meat. The reason I do that is so that the seasoning itself is kind of working uh, in cooperation with the other piece. So that downward pressure that we'll eventually give it will help draw the moisture out of this fish. So it'll draw some of the moisture out and it'll infuse the seasoning in. Now I'll keep going here. This might turn into rapid speed because I think you guys will get the picture. Okay, and you'll see the second layer is uh, skin side up. So you see that was flesh to flesh as I put it in there. Uh, now this toad is getting heavy. That was the third layer of salmon. And now you can see we put that one skin side down so that the layer right below it uh, was skin to skin such that now we've got flesh up and the next ones will go 
um, flesh to flesh, so skin side up. Okay, and we're on the home stretch. Just a couple more pieces to go. Okay, now we're ready for the last step of the night. So we've got this salmon, we've got the layers in there. You can kind of see how they've stacked up. And now what I'll do is I'll take some saran wrap. So I'll take a couple of strips of saran wrap. I like to put two or three and kind of overlap them. And I'll cover this whole, this whole tote such that I'll then kind of push down. I'll get some constant pressure applied to this fish uh, such that those fillets are kind of flesh to flesh really firmly against each other and that's going to let the, the brine really, really work its magic. You'll see the saran wrap doesn't have to come over the edges, but what I like to do is I kind of push it to the edge inside such that all of this meat is now covered with that saran wrap and then I just give it some steady pressure down. So give all those fillets just some steady pressure, really start to apply some weight to that fish and those fillets are all going to be really compacted together. Very last step, put the lid on and it goes in the fridge overnight. When we pick this back up tomorrow, you'll notice that it will have drawn a lot of the moisture out of the fish. So you see how the fish is sort of stacked up there? You'd be surprised, the moisture itself, the liquid is just gonna draw right out of this fish. It'll probably be right around there just with liquid, which is great. It's kind of pulling some of that moisture out and really driving that seasoning right down into the meat. I like to give it about 24 hours or so to brine. Okay, it's been about 24 hours and now it's time to rack this fish. So I pulled this out of the uh, fridge, it's been in there overnight. And as expected, there's a lot of moisture that's been drawn out of the fish. I took a couple of pictures, kind of a before and after. So one yesterday and one today, and you'll see just how much extra moisture got pulled out. So what I have here is a large baking sheet. I have uh, two of these. These are the same, the same sheets that I used to display the fish yesterday. And I also have four wire racks. So I've got uh, wire racks like this, and you'll see they have uh, legs on them, which is really nice. They're actually stackable. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll end up putting the first wire rack right down in the bottom of this sheet with the legs folded down. So that's just gonna lay nice and flat in there. And then I'll stack some salmon on there. And then what I'll do is I'll grab another wire rack and you'll see that these are designed uh, to stack perfectly, which then will give you sort of two two rows of fish. So that'll help you sort of from a space perspective because once we rack this fish, it's gonna go back in the fridge overnight. So we're gonna give it about another 24 hours. And the reason we do that is really to form a nice pellicle. So once the uh, brine has taken set, so after that first 24 hours, uh, you, there's been no air in there. Remember, we kind of pushed down that plastic and got, got all the air out. Now we want to do the opposite. We're going to put the fish on the rack and we want the air to hit it. So it's going to be in the open air in the, uh, in the refrigerator. And so by doing this, you're able to do two, two rows of, uh, of fish and that's much more space efficient for, for a refrigerator. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll peel off that plastic. It just comes right off. That was that plastic wrap we used to, to pressure the fish downward. And now we've got the, the bucket of fish here. And what I'll do is just sort of start putting it on the rack. So we don't have to, we don't have to overcomplicate this. The reality is we just need to get the fish on the rack. Uh, it's best if the fish is not all touching itself. So you want to make sure that there's a little bit of space uh, in between each piece so that the uh, surface area gets the most open air uh, possible. So basically we want to just keep repeating this process and just go ahead and, and rack this fish. Again, there's going to be sort of multiple racks here. So eventually I'll, I'll speed up the process. So you'll see it in, in rapid mode here. 
But the one point I do want to make as I'm racking this fish is that there is no rinsing required. So some brines, you'll actually kind of rinse it off before you, uh, before you rack it, before you try to get that pellicle to form. That is not needed with this brine. So this, uh, this original masterpiece, it's actually formulated such that you don't have to do that. So it actually will provide just sort of a really rich flavor as is. And you'll see the way it finishes on the, uh, on the smoker is just, just incredible. It gives it a really, really rich, flavorful pellicle. So I would, uh, I would advise against rinsing any fish. I would leave all of this seasoning on here for the most possible flavor. So this rack looks good. So I'm going to add the next wire rack and now you'll see this in warp speed mode because I'll just rack the rest of this fish. Okay, now we're done racking the fish. And actually just one more point I wanna make about the, uh, the pellicle. So some people might look at this fish at this stage and say, hey, that looks pretty good. Why don't we just throw it on the smoker? And you know what? Um, if you did, it would probably taste pretty darn good. Although if you're looking for the best possible outcome, that pellicle is actually really important. So it's gonna provide almost a, a tacky texture. So you can see how this fish is still moist because I've just pulled it out of here. A lot of moisture has come out, but there is still some moisture uh, on the surface here. If you give this 24 hours to form that pellicle, that, that sort of tacky coat, um, there's not gonna be quite as much moisture. It's actually gonna be a little bit almost sticky. And what's great about that is not only does it form, like I said, a really nice uh, coating on the outside, it gives it almost a nice crust. It really holds the, uh, the brine well, but it also holds the smoke well. So when you put it in the smoker and depending on what, what wood chips you're using, you know, the goal is to kind of get some of that smoke to infuse into the fish. And when you get a good pellicle, that smoke will actually stick really well to the pellicle and it'll really give it kind of a nice uh, flavor. That pellicle will give it good rigidity. Uh, just an awesome overall bite of salmon. So I would highly recommend going the extra step here to put it in for uh, 24 more hours in the, in the fridge, in the open air, to make sure you get a nice good pellicle to form. Okay, and what I'm showing you here is actually the liquid that was left over. So this is the liquid that was pulled out by the, uh, by the brine overnight. I'll just sort of rotate it uh, each way so you can see. There's probably about maybe three quarters of a cup or so, a half cup, three quarters of a cup of liquid. Uh, this is awesome because that liquid is pulled out of the fish, uh, which, is, which is excellent because that's gonna actually help uh, set up for a really nice texture once this hits the smoker. Okay, we've got our two racks of salmon here. Now these go to the refrigerator in the open air for about 24 hours. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and now I have pulled the fish out of the fridge. So for the last cycle, this fish was just airing out on these drying racks in the open air in the fridge. And as you can see, it is set up just perfectly. So you can tell that there's not as much moisture on the, on the surface and you can see that the surface, I'll just kind of uh, push on it, has formed a really nice sort of tacky consistency and that's the pellicle. So that is exactly what I was describing before that's gonna really hold that smoke. It's gonna capture a lot of that rich flavor of the brine. That's gonna go perfectly. So I've got the smoker preheating right now to 165. I'm using my pellet grill. So it's a Traeger pellet grill, but lots of people will have either different types of pellet grills or, or maybe different types of smokers like a Bradley. Some folks could even, uh, even use an oven at a very low temperature but that thing is heating up right now as we speak and I can't wait to get this fish in the smoker okay here we are at the smoker and now we're ready for the main event so we've got the smoker all preheated up to about 165 so 165 is the number I'll be looking for throughout this I will lose a bunch of heat once I put the fish on I'll open it up and getting all that cooler fish on is definitely going to knock the temperature down but of course once I close that lid that smoke will build back up that heat will build back up and it'll smoke really nicely so the the next step here is just to get the fish on the smoker so we're just going to lay it out similar to how we laid it out on those racks we want to make sure that it's not touching so that there's a little bit of space in between so that that smoke can really work its way through and get on the pellicle. But there's not really a, a pure science to this. This is pretty simple. Just uh, there's not a right or wrong way to do it. We just need to get the fish on the smoker at this point. Okay. 
okay, I've got the smoker all loaded up. You can see there's fish on the top and bottom. And what I've done is I've actually deprioritized the tail pieces. The reason I did that is because I knew I was gonna run out of space for this full batch. So what I can do is follow up with another quick batch with those tail pieces, which are all very thin. So those tail pieces are definitely thinner than the rest of these. So what I've done is essentially make sure that I've got a somewhat uniform thickness of all the pieces on here. I would say these are more like the marquee pieces, uh, a little bit thicker, those really nice sections. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just follow up with a, a second batch of those tails, which will be much quicker. Okay, and then the last step before we close this up is actually to insert the probe. So I've got the temperature probe in my hand here. What I'll do is I'll insert that nice and deep into one representative piece. I, I'd like to call it a kind of a medium piece. So you don't want to pick the thinnest one, you don't want to pick the thickest one, but just somewhere in the middle that'll give you a representative reading of where this batch of smoked salmon's at. I'll be aiming at 130. So 130 will be sort of the magic number that I'd like to see here. What I'll do is I'll set this to alarm at 125. So when a medium piece of fish hits about 125, this will alarm. I can come over to the smoker and take a look and see exactly where we stand. At that point, some of the thinner pieces might be already done. I can get a sense of maybe how much longer we have to, uh, to get some of those thicker pieces done. But that's when I'll start to really assess. When that medium temperature, or when the medium piece of fish hits 125, that's when we'll really start looking at when we need to take this off. Okay, and as I close the smoker up, I know that I'll be aiming somewhere around three hours. So you could call it maybe that two to four hour range, but I would say on average around three hours is, a, is about how long it'll take to hit that 130. Again, thickness depending, depending on the outside conditions. Some smokers will heat a little uh, quicker than others, that type of thing. So three hours is kind of that, that average that I like to, to have in the back of my mind once I set this smoker. And then again, I'll be keying in on when that, when that probe hits 125. So in case you're interested in what pellets I'm using in the smoker today, it's actually Traeger's Gourmet Blend, which is a mix of uh, maple, hickory, and cherry. I really like this a lot for smoked fish. I think the, uh, the cherry and the maple really come out to give it a nice sweet flavor profile. You get that kind of dark, bold flavor of the hickory and then some of those sweeter notes of the maple and cherry. I really like that a lot. Uh, and in, in addition to that gourmet blend, uh, another wood I really like to smoke with is, uh, is alder. So alder wood, that's just that classic sort of Alaskan smoked salmon flavor. In the brine, I actually have alder wood smoked salt. So you already get some, some alder coming out of this batch of smoked salmon, but sometimes I'll even use all, alder uh, pellets just to really reinforce that flavor. Hey, one other tip to consider is when you pull the fish out of the fridge, it's a good idea to let it rest for maybe 30 minutes or so, just to bring it up to room temperature before putting it on the smoker. So this will actually help kind of promote a more even doneness, and then it'll also help the smoker retain more of the heat. If you put a bunch of cold pieces of fish on the smoker, then that's gonna deplete all the heat straight away. And again, it'll impact the uh, consistency of, of, of doneness. You know, similar to how you do a steak. You wouldn't put a, a freezing cold steak right on a, on a grill. It's good to bring those up to temperature before applying them to the grill. Same concept applies here with the smoked fish. Hey, you know what guys, I thought I'd throw in a bonus method here. So we have the smoker loaded up with all the thicker pieces and we did have these extra tails that just didn't fit. I mentioned I may do another batch, a second batch in the smoker, but instead, you know what, I'm gonna parallel path this just to show that you can make this really delicious smoked salmon in the oven as well. So my oven will only go to 170, that's the lowest setting. So if you're making it in the oven, I would just suggest put it at the lowest possible setting. You see I have it on the same wire rack inside a, uh, inside a baking sheet. And then what we'll do is we'll just sort of close that up. We'll go ahead and bake this at the lowest possible setting. Like I said, 170 is my number here for probably about three hours. And given the fact that that, that brine already has that alder smoked salt, it'll still come out with a really rich flavor, even in the oven without any additional smoke. So this oven approach can be really valuable for a number of different reasons. Uh, first of all, you might not have a smoker. So if you don't have a smoker, but you still want smoked fish, again, the smokiness of this brine will still produce smoked fish even in the oven. Um, it could be the off season. So maybe your smoker's in a shed somewhere or in the garage and you just don't want to get it out for one batch of smoked salmon. 
It could be that it's the on season and maybe something's wrong with your smoker. So maybe you ran out of pellets or you're having some, some issues, or perhaps you just prefer the simplicity of staying in your kitchen. Maybe it's pouring down rain and out there and you know you're only three hours away from having some delicious smoked fish in the oven so it's just a little bit of a simpler path so whatever you do please don't overlook this idea of cooking it in the oven you can still get some really tasty fish with this method okay guys so it's time for the big reveal so it's been two hours and 55 minutes so we're just shy of the three hour mark and the probe is actually sort of um, oscillating between 129 and 130 degrees so i know that we're right there in the temperature range that we need these are all similarly sized pieces so i suspect that these will all be ready to pull off if we had any much smaller pieces those tails i probably would have pulled them a little sooner but since i know these are similar sized pieces uh, we're right at that 129 130 30, definitely time to uh, lift this lid up and see what we've got. Oh, and there you have it, a beautiful batch of that original masterpiece smoked salmon. So just to check for doneness, you'll see me pressing the salmon. So I'll actually just put my finger and kind of give it some light pressure. What you want is for it to give a little bit. You don't want it to be too soft because if it's too soft it might actually not be done but you want a little bit of give if you overcook smoked salmon it'll get really really firm and really dry and you don't want that then it tastes like cardboard so you do want uh, and I find that 130 is like a great number to pull it off on you want to pull it off such that you'll still have a little bit of that softness you'll have a little bit of that moisture left in the fish and of course that just wonderful flavor that pellicle has now sort of absorbed all the flavor of the brine it's absorbed all the flavor of the smoke and that is just a delicious bite of smoked salmon okay so the very last step here is to pull this fish off the smoker so i'll put it back on those drying racks i will let it come back down to room temperature and then i'll vacuum seal it so it's important not to vacuum seal it right off the right off the smoker that'll actually kind of yield extra steam and moisture that just doesn't do well for a long-term vacuum seal so what i like to do is i like to pull this off just let it sit on the counter on those racks at room temperature bring it back down to uh you know to room temperature and then basically you're ready to uh, vacuum seal it or you can actually just toss it in a bag and eventually friends and family will just probably eat it all up so if you're trying to save some for the long haul just get it get that vacuum sealer out if you don't mind it getting all eaten up then within the next day or two it almost certainly will uh, will become a tasty treat Here's sort of a representative piece. You see how, you know, the pellicle has really absorbed that brine. So it's got great, great color. I can promise you there's really great flavor there as well on, uh, on all sides. And then just a really delicious sort of moist bite here of, uh, of smoked salmon. Just, just a wonderful, wonderful outcome. Just kind of peel that skin off and there you go. That is unbelievably delicious. Okay, right around the three hour mark, I also pulled the oven batch of smoked salmon, these tails that we had left over. And as you can see, it turned out to be a really nice batch of fish. So you can see the uh, similar sort of pellicle. It's got that really nice crust with really good uh, flavor from the brine. And, and as you can see, some really nice, uh, nice moisture as well. So really nice smoked fish. Okay, now we've pulled the salmon off the smoker. Time to put in some vacuum seal bags. So I've got the, the racks of salmon here, a stack of vacuum seal bags, and then this big plastic tote. So what I'll do is I'll take the bags, I'll put a couple of pieces of smoked salmon in there, and then I'll just stick it in the plastic tote. That way I'll have a whole tote full of these bags ready to vacuum seal. And so once this tote's all filled up, the salmon will be uh, all in bags. Then I'll take it down to the vacuum sealer and get it all sealed up.
Okay, we've got the smoked fish packaged up into vacuum sealer bags. You can see we've got a whole tote of it here. The very last step is to take this down to the vacuum sealer, give it a seal, and then we'll be ready to enjoy smoked salmon for months to come. Well, I hope you enjoyed this smoked salmon recipe. And before I wrap things up, I did just want to make one last point, and it's that there's no one single right way to make smoked salmon. So there's no perfect seasoning or an exact amount of time that is right in every scenario. So I would just encourage you to try things out. Try different flavors, try some different seasonings, figure out how long you like it on the smoker. Some people will use different types of smokers. Some people will cook it in the oven. There's all kinds of ways to make a really tasty bite of smoked salmon. So please never feel like there's only kind of one silver bullet answer to how do you make smoked salmon. But uh, as you're tinkering around and trying different things, if you are interested in trying the seasoning that, that I use today, my, uh, my original masterpiece, my uh, smoked salmon dry brine, uh, it is available over on my website, so f feel free to go over there and, and pick it up. And increasingly, it will be available in stores throughout Alaska and also the Pacific Northwest. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone's support and tight lines for now.